Good morning. It's Monday morning, uh, and we're going to read from Revelation 19, 11 through 18. Yes. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and with a loud voice he called to all the birds that fly directly overhead, Come, gather for the great supper of God, to eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and warriors and their riders, and the flesh of all men, both free and slave, small and great. So here we have a couple of visions. Um, he sees Jesus coming out on the horse, and he's described in various ways, title things that we've seen before um, in, in this book. He's described, and he's, you know, he comes out with a sharp sword in his mouth at the word of God, you know, the, the scriptures. Um, he comes out with, followed by all these millions on their horses with white robes, and they're coming out to make war on God's enemies. Um, he will strike them down and, and um, he'll become king of kings and lord of lords and, and that's it. Uh, then an angel calls to all the birds and in sort of a parody you had the feast of the lamb. Now you've got this great supper and all the enemy bodies are being consumed by birds. It's said that after Gettysburg, the the vultures you know that eat dead things they were they they have a migration route and they fly from south to north and north to south and after gettysburg and the next time they made that trip they swerved like 75 miles out of their way to uh to feast on the dead things at gettysburg and and it was so the, the, it was such an event that for several generations of birds, they were still flying through Gettysburg and not their normal migration route. And scientists could study this and know this. And um, there are people living today who observe the birds coming by. So it, it's it's a thing that really did happen. So this great supper happens and all these birds come to eat, to eat the enemy. Um well, this is very weird for us and very hard to understand. Uh, what in the world could he be talking about? Um, some kind of battle happens and and the birds are summoned to come and, and clean it up, as it were, to eat the, eat the flesh of the dead. Um, um, and, and there are some birds, of course, that, that do that sort of thing. Uh, and we think about the great battles. Gettysburg was one. There were many others in Civil War. There were battles in World War I where millions and millions of people died in a day. And so you know that they weren't all quickly buried. And so the birds did have a feast. Um, and none of those armies were God's enemies. But that's you get that imagery from, from what happens in wartime. And you see what's being described here. Again and again, I say, I, I think this is all about giving us comfort that God's enemies will be destroyed and the birds will eat their flesh, but you faithful ones will be just fine. Um, the worst they can do is kill you, and that won't really be so bad. So don't let it bother you. Don't worry about it. Don't fret. 
just just go and and um and and see how it is and you you're going to be okay and that's that's how it is that's that's the truth so uh with that i will leave you today and we will see you again tomorrow